Okay, in this question, Mr. Adams buys juice boxes for 384 students. And the juice boxes are sold in cases of 24. And each student receives one juice box. So how many cases has Mr. Adams bought? Now, you might intuitively know right away how to solve this problem. But if not, let's look at some problem-solving strategies we could use. Well, first off, we notice that we've got students and we've got cases and that these things are related. So the question is, how are they related? So let's put down here the number of cases and then the uh, number of students and then there will be some rule or operation that will relate the two. So if we had one case, then 24 students would get a juice box. If we had two cases, then 48 students would get a juice box. And if we had three cases, then 72 students would get a juice box. Now you can see this is going to take us some time. Our goal is to get to 384 students and figure out, well, how many cases does that take? But no worries, what we're interested in here is the rule that relates the number of cases to the number of students. And when we look at it and say, well, how did we get to, from 1 to 24? We multiplied by 24. How did we get from 2 to 48? We multiplied by 24. How did we get from 3 to 72? We multiplied by 24. So we know that the rule is the number of cases times 24 gives us the number of students. Another way to write this is we could say the number of cases times 24 equals the number of students that get a juice box. Now in this case we went from the number of cases to the number of students but the question gives us the number of students and asks how many cases. So we're actually going in reverse. So let's try that. Let's say we start with the number of students and we apply some rule and we'll end up with the number of cases. So in this case if we had 24 students it would require one case. 48 students we'd need two cases. 72 students we'd need three cases. Again if we did it this way well it's going to take us a while but the goal is to when we had 384 students how many cases would that require. Well, let's find the relationship here. Let's find that rule. How did I get from 24 to 1? Well, in this case, I divided by 24. From 48 to 2, same thing. Divide by 24. 72 to 3, divide by 24. So that rule applies all the way down. And in this case, we started with 384 students divided by 24, that would equal the number of cases that we need. Now at this point we just can go ahead and do the math and, and divide 384 by 24, but let's say that uh, our division wasn't that strong, we weren't that confident in our division, and let's say that we didn't have a calculator around. What we can do is some estimation. We can look at 384 and say, what's that close to? Well, 384 we could round up, say, to 400. And 24, a close number might be 25. So in this case, our division problem becomes 400 divided by 25, which is a lot easier to do. But we recognize it's still an estimate. So let's go ahead and do that division. So we've got 400 here divided by 25. And 25 goes into 40 once. And we subtract here to get 5, 1. Bring down the 0, and 25 and 150, we can just think about it, 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, that would be 6 times. And that would give us 150, subtract the remainder 0. So our answer down here, 400 divided by 25, is 16. Now remember, this is our estimate here, but we can go back to our first 
rule here and see, well, I can verify if I take the number of cases that we thought the answer is 16, multiply by 24, let's see if it gives us 384. So we do the math, 24 times 16, see what happens. 6 times 4 is 24, carry the 2. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 2 is 144, 0. 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2. Add these together, 4, 8, 384. So there we go. Mr. Adams must have bought 16 cases to give 384 students one juice box each.